So this is session 2AK. Uh, Kickstart your mainframe with Zoe and open source. And over to you, Joe. Cool, thanks, Joe. You can still hear me? There's no. If okay. Clear great. as anything. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. So we've got an hour. Um, so my name's Joe Winchester and Kickstart your mainframe is Zoe and open source. I work for IBM, although for this session, I, I'm not here to represent IBM or sell anything IBM has got for you. Um, I'm very lucky to be paid by IBM to basically work in an open source project called Zoe that is owned and managed by an umbrella organization called the Open Mainframe Project, which does a lot of open source on the mainframe, everything from the um, stewarding the Linux on Z distributions that run to a number of different other projects. And that, that's actually part of the Linux Foundation as well. So I'd like to scratch the words IBM out and put Linux Foundation in there, which I've, um, there's a barcode here that I was asked to put here and it's also at the end. So please, if you, I think you might have to scan that for feedback or something. Um, that's the session number. Let's get going. So we've got an hour. Um, I'm planning to do quite a lot of demos. Um, uh, GSE, GSE is a not-for-profit not and there's a link there. Stuart, do I have to do anything with that? Explaining this chart, it was in the template. Um, okay, I'll carry you, on. You, you don't have to do anything as a, a kindly, you've given your time for um, uh, presenting. If people okay. have your session, yeah. they're welcome to donate to the uh, RNLI or Guide Dogs for the Blind. And in return, uh, there are raffle tickets and various raffle prizes that uh, have been donated that people can win too. Awesome. I definitely, RNLI I'm a big fan for. They actually saved my father's life. He was on a, he was on a boat crossing from, the, um, from Wales to, to Ireland in the Irish Sea and uh, their boat capsized and got into troubles. Um, and... Uh, his life was saved. Unfortunately, one of the other crew members was um, at Paris. So uh, they're, and they're an amazing charity that, that you know, um, that they came out in very, very rough weather and did amazing things. Anyway, here we go. That's about me, more about kicks. Um, so if anybody wants to ask a question, please do. Uh, I think Stuart can take you off mute or else you can go into the chat. You're probably all familiar with using Zoom. But if it's something I don't cover, just hit me with it. Um, I'm part of the team that drives Zoe forward. Um, we're an agile project. Uh, we decide every quarter, we do PI planning, we ship every six weeks. Um, and I'm also very close to the Kix organization as well. So I can get them to do things as well. So please holler, okay? So I'd, I'd love to receive information from you. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna talk about is ZOS. Most of us here are probably familiar with ZOS operating system. The, the, the picture I'm going to try and paint up with this talk is how do, how do, okay, we can either log on to ZOS and get it to do things for us. And for myself, I'm 55, for folks perhaps over 45, over 40, they're very comfortable doing that. Um, they're very comfortable logging on to TSO, they're very comfortable using Kix applications like CDA or Keki or CCI or, uh, you know, um, they're very comfortable um, perhaps, um, you know, writing JCL um, and they're very comfortable being in that world. The, the, the world of Zoe, Zoe, we have something we call, when we got together to create Zoe, the three words that we came out of our design thinking session were open, simple and familiar. So Zoe's open source, all of our sources open, it's not read-only open source. Anybody who wants to can actually fork our repository, create pull requests, get involved. You can become committers. It's very democratic. Um, you know, people have to stand down from positions, get elected. So it's a very, um, it's, it's, it's proper open source. It's, it's IO open source. You can contribute to it, ideas and stuff like that. So the, we've got the open. Um, simple, I'll let you decide at the end whether we've made the world simpler. Um, but the familiar, is if, if you are on your laptop and you're a developer, I'm going to focus on developers rather than system programmers for this particular talk, how does the mainframe over here look familiar to you? You being somebody who's used to using a laptop, used to using a Mac or Windows or Linux machine, and used to, to using tools that really belong over here. 
So for example, over here, we're probably all familiar with source code managers like um, you know, in, in Endeavor or Panvalet or Changeman or things like that. Um, over here, people are more, more familiar with things like GitHub and Bitbucket and stuff like that. Um, there are CI CD, there are uh, DevOpsy tools that run on the mainframe, um, uh, you know, offered by all of the you know, big software vendors. Some of them are great. I'm not knocking any of them. But over here, we're looking more to things like you know, Jenkins and Travis and Bamboo and Team City and things like that. So how, how do we make this, this world familiar so that you're really driving and operating a mainframe and orchestrating scripts on a mainframe uh, without having to transport yourself over into that world and start logging onto a green screen? And um, that's really one of the, the, the F for the familiar. OK, so the first part of Zoe I'm going to talk about is what we call the CLI or the command line interface. OK, now I've got lots of embedded videos on here. So unfortunately, this presentation with the embedded videos was too hard for me to upload because it's quite large as a PDF. But if anybody wants this, reach out to me on LinkedIn or something, or else maybe Stuart and I can work and we can upload the larger video. So I'm going to play some of these videos quickly. If you do not have the Zoe command line interface installed, basically what you do is, first of all, make sure you've got Node installed on your laptop. And the way you make sure Node is installed is you just type Node hyphen hyphen version. It'll either come back with a number. I happen to have 14.7.1 involved. If it doesn't come back with a number, just Google for download Node and download Node. You may already have Node on your laptop. If you don't, Node is a prerequisite for the Zoe command line interface. OK, and what I'm showing you here is that if you go to the Zoe docs, I'll try and use the Zoe docs as much as possible. And I'm just flipping it into the dark theme on this video. Um, we have a section called installing the Zoe command line interface. And once we install the Zoe command line interface, the command line interface comes in two formats. I'm just going to stop it right there. Um, you can either connect to an online repository of node packages, which is called NPM, which is Node Package Manager, and you can grab the CLI from there, and you can grab our extensions from there. I know a lot of mainframe customers don't really like to have live access from their laptops you know, to the internet, the Node Package Manager. So you can grab um, a TGZ file, which is basically a compressed archive file, and then if you get that onto your laptop, perhaps you email it to yourself or put it in the USB stick or, or share it somehow, um, you can install from that. So we support both of those two mechanisms. Okay. And once you've got that installed, I'll just go forward a little bit here in the video. Uh, there we are. You type npm install uh, dash g is global for me, my global scope. That is the ID of the Zoe command line interface, or else that will be the location of that TGZ file that you, you put down there. And with the following wind, I recorded this earlier, um, it basically will install. OK. What I'm going to quickly do now is I'm just going to minimize that. And I'm going to start to drive it for you. I'm going to go to demo. But, so once I've installed the Zoe command line interface, you get the command Zoe. OK. Um, and this is really modeled on, it's very similar. You know, I have Git installed. And when I have Git, I can type the word Git. And what Git will do is it will tell me all of my Git commands available, right? And these are all of my Git commands. And, you know, it lets me access um, GitHub. Uh, Zoe's, Zoe's the same. Once I type Zoe, it'll tell me everything I can do with Zoe. Now, the first thing I always like to do with Zoe is take it for a little spin. Um, just going to go, so looking over here. Um, I've installed some extensions to Zoe. When you first install, that's because I'm going to present these later. Uh, Kix is an extension. It won't be there by default. DB2 is an extension. These two are extensions. But, but um, as you're installing extensions into the Zoe command line interface, basically the list of verbs and nouns gets richer. First thing I'm going to do, the first very sort of hello world for me, is basically we're going to list some files and submit a job. And I'm going to just walk can, through how. So can I just ask a question? So this is one of the things that I've um, I've uh, not really understood with Zoe um, plugins. Okay. But um, I, I know that you can go and download them. You know they're in in those files. But um, the what what needs to be on 
the back end? Does kicks need to be or DB2 need to be made so we're aware on the back end as well? That's a really good question, sir. So, so your question was based, I'm just recapping it to make sure I get it right. So, so the answer is yes. So I'm gonna do Zoe plugins list. So I've installed a number of plugins to my Zoe command line interface. Mm -hmm. um, uh, let's look at the, th these are both from vendors. These are both from IBM. So let's ignore these for now. Um, for the kicks and DB2 one, yes. So, so to get the basic Zoe functionality working, so I'm just gonna do Zoe jobs list jobs, for example, because that's a basic one. To get Zoe jobs list jobs to work, it's just listing my jobs. I am connecting to ZOSMF at the back end. If ZOSMF wasn't there, it could also connect to FTP. You just, it's how you configure it. And it can also actually connect, there's actually an IBM product called Remote System Explorer that you can connect to. Now, to connect to Kix, yes, you need to have a Kix connection available as um, what's called a CMCI. Because what we're doing is we're talking, it's a client server interface. So we, we, we've got to have somebody that we can dial up to. And that's the CMCI interface. For DB that's a standard sort of interface though. If I went to one of my kick systems programmers and said, I need a CMCI uh, address that's um, familiar to them, is it? It's not, so, Yes, to answer your quick question, yes. So if I go to um, uh, I go to medium.com slash Zoe and I type the word kicks here. Uh, using the kicks ex Zoe Explore extension for kicks. This article talks through it. <clears throat> And I'll the way it works is, let me see if, are you still there, Stuart? Can, I am, yeah, yeah. Happy. Okay, great. Hanging great. on every word. So, so this is a screenshot of the Kix region here. And it, on not every Kix region or Kix Plex will be enabled for this interface. It's a TCP IP service. That has to be installed into Kix. Um, if you have a standalone Kix region, um, and I can I, I can show this one later because I will like to be connecting to it. There's a TCP/IP service called DFH dollar WUTC, which stands for Web User. I'm not sure what the T and the C okay. stand for, but basically that has to be installed, and then that will basically bring up that um, HTTP interface or HTTPS that you can then connect into. Um, if you have a Kixplex, it's a little bit different. There's a basically, what you need to do is you need to go into that Kix region, look at, there's a file called EYU log. And if that EYU log file, it the, um, has a, a CMCI port and the uh, host name. So it's slightly different as to whether it's a Kixplex or a Kix port. I think that we, in this blog here, there's a link and I'm going to click that link. So remember how I got to that? I went to medium.com slash Zoe and I just typed the word kicks to search for it. There is in the presentation a link to this. Um, it's got remarkably slow on me today. So setting up a CMCI, it's called Kicks Management Client Interface. There's two ways you can do it. You can connect to it. So, so a standalone Kicks region is not part of a Kicks Plex. It's just an address base just on its own. So. We talk about standalone regions. For a standalone region, you follow these. Do you have to do a bit of fiddling about here? It's okay. You give me you give me the tip because even though I where it said Zoe Explorer, I wouldn't have necessarily put the CLI and the Zoe Explorer to, together. You know, that's that's just my brain working like that. So uh, I appreciate. It. I can yeah. I can do that digging now that you've shown me the the starting point that actually it's there documented in the uh, in the Explorer. Thanks. Yeah, it is. So I'm going a little bit off topic here, but it's a good conversation. So the reason that the CLI and the Zoe Explorer are together, the command line interface is written in Node. So if I go to npm.js, which has got, I don't know how many packages it's got, it's got a lot anyway. 
And I type the word Zoe, you'll find 49 packages with the word Zoe as its namespace. Now, some of these are command line interface extensions. Like this is an extension that you plug in. But Zoe, the, the Zoe command line interface itself, when I do github.com slash Zoe and I type, um, I think it's CLI. So I'm going into our, uh, yeah, Zoe CLI. The Zoe CLI itself is what's called a monorepo. And in that monorepo are basically all of the node packages for all of the command line interface itself. So let me see if I can line these two up side by side. So if I type the word Zoe here, what you will see da, 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 is you will see that the Zoe command line interface has got something that lets me do with files, something that lets me do with jobs, something that lets me deal with issuing commands. And these are all in separate packages and these are all distributed on NPM JS. So you can actually access these as node libraries. Then the Zoe Explorer, so we're jumping ahead now, but it's good to jump ahead. The Zoe Explorer, which is here, this is our VS Code extension, yeah. and I can go to Zoe Explorer. When I install the Zoe Explorer, it's exactly the same. So let me line these two up side by side. Um, I'm gonna try and I'm gonna see if I can get this to work. Okay, so let me be clear. So let me go Zoe files. Okay, Zoe profiles list, SOSMF. So what that is, is that's a list of all the systems it's not very big. Um, so I've got a system called 3B, PK, and SVL. I've got three systems here. When I go to the Zoe Explorer, which is in VS Code, um, again, I'm just, which is my Zoe icon here, what you'll see is they're the same. Come on, be nice. You see that system is called 3B here in PK and SVL. They're the same systems defined with the same credentials. Because even though this is written in TypeScript and this is written in Node, they share the same underlying packages because TypeScript has compiled Node. So what, you, what you've got is everything that talks about setting up and configuring a connection for a command line interface works exactly for the Zoe Explorer because fundamentally it's the same underlying code. Thank you. Does that help? Yeah. It does now. Yeah. Thank you. So, so you can visualize these as different form factors on the same underlying logic, which is the heavy lifting that says, I need to get to a mainframe. And, and you're right. So for the, for the Kix connection, you need a Kix connection at the back end for other connections as well. So I, we did one for DB2. Um, Medium.com. Sorry, and there's MQ as well. I won't go into all of them, but if I look at this configuring DB2 command line interface, generally, oh, it's funny that was written by me. But um, but but there are other good articles. If I look at prerequisites installing down here, I'm going to have something about how to work out the port. Here you are. You can basically run a um. You basically have to look at the Jez job and you from there you find the host and the port that you can connect to. You create a CLI profile to connect to that. And then your VS Code extension, if you have one, will connect to that as well. Yeah. It, it's just the, the kicks one because that DB2 one is is um, a normal type or connection, isn't it? That, you know, there's there's one of the, the the types of connection, and that's a standard one. It's just the kicks one that not being a kicks person. So that's why I thought I'd grab your time. Anyway, sorry, I've distracted you. No, no worries. It's it's exactly what I, I get asked that back up. Okay, no, um, not at all. So where were we? Um, okay, so I'm gonna do a little bit of driving just for, the, for folks who haven't seen this before. I want to try and show you. So if I don't know what to do, so I'm gonna type Zoe. Zoe tells me I can work with files. I'm just gonna do some stuff with files now. Now, when I type Zoe files, it says, well, what can I do with files? And it says I can list files. 
so we file so so you can see what I'm doing here there is the more I type it just tells me well what's missing so I can do Zoe files list ds and I'm going to do Zoe files list ds and I'm going to type in winchj.star and I'm going to get some files back um now that's my set of files with my high level qualifier um if I don't know what to do, by the way, my favorite command is I do Zoe hyphen hyphen HW for help web. And I'm just going to drag in this. And this lets me see the entire scope, the entire landscape of everything that I can do. So for example, like if I can type the word files, I can see everything I can do with files across all of the products that I've got installed. So I can see Zoe files list, this data set, and you can even see all of the samples, you know, and you can do copy and things. And that's very useful. So for example, if I want to do, so you had to do submit, I can type submit and I can see the syntax for how to submit the job. So you either have that choice, you, you either have that kind of muscle memory help exactly as you need it, um, or you can have the, the other one. Very quick thing I just want to show is I can do Zoe files list AM for all members, winch J, JCL. I have a file called copy job. So let's go and have a look at that file. I can go Zoe files download. Now, what I'm trying to show you here is that, you know, I'm, I'm not logged onto TSO. Sometimes people look at this and they go, well, this is okay, but, but why didn't you just log onto TSO? I'm on my laptop. So because I can string these commands together, I can do, put them inside bigger scripts and I can put them inside, you know, uh, you know, gulp runners, task runners. I can put them inside Ruby scripts. I can put them inside pipelines and I can basically, I'm just writing Unix commands effectively um, to do things like this, right? I can do Zoe files download. And then when I do cat on this file here, so just cat it, it's now on my local file system. And in fact, I can even do Zoe files submit and lf was a, was my local file system one and i can submit that file from my local file system um very oh no it's not, not zoe file submit you see this is where i could you know i can do it's if i have a look it's actually what is it it's zoe zoe job submit so i made a mistake there zoe job submit lf so what i've done is i've basically shown you that i can submit that file that file will go ahead. And if you look at that file, that file copies something called from and it copies something to something called to. So if I rerun that command, I should see a new file. Okay. So I ran that file. So what I'm trying to show you there, one of the other things that's very nice about automating these is the JCL substitution variables. So if you're writing a bunch of scripts and you're driving JCL, what I found quite a lot of customers do is let's go and have a look. I want to show you what this member looks like called copy palm. So if I go Zoe files, download copy palm, let's go and look at that one. Now, copy palm is actually a bit more interesting because copy palm has got JCL variables that are not hard coded, right? It's ampersand from and ampersand to. So if I was to submit that job, which I can do right now, it's going to fail. Yeah. So if I go Zoe job submit, now I'm going to do DS, the data set rather than the local file. And I'm going to try and submit that job. It's going to fail because that's a JCL error. That's badly formed JCL. Okay. Um, oh, let me do it again. And let me just do uh, WFO. WFO means wait for output. Okay, because first time I did it, the job submitted to the jazz queue and I got told instantly the status came back for input. It was a bit quick. Wait for output is quite nice because it's now, it's not asynchronous, it's effectively synchronous. It's waiting for it to come back as a JCL error. The reason it's a JCL error is because it's invalid. But I, I know that in winchday.jcl, so what I can do now is I do another argument called JCL symbols. Okay, and I can say from equals, uh, I can copy my file, 
well, I can copy my file itself because my file itself is called copy palm. Two equals, let me just look around my desk. What have I got lying on my desk? Uh, I've got a red pen. Okay. Um, and what that's gone and done is that submitted that JCL, but it substituted those arguments in. So that came back without a JCL error. That came back with a return code of zero. And when I do Zoe, let me go all the way back down, list all of my members. I see it got copied across to my red pen. I, and I, you know, so what I'm trying to show you here is that for for people who have JCL scripts, what I found with customers is they they start using the um, ampersand sign, they create the variables around it, and then they write. So it's like a facade pattern. So they create something old. Perhaps they've got some great piece of JCL that works. They parameterize it. And then they drive it from, from automation scripts where the user driving it from the outside just is literally passing parameters in, kind of oblivious with how they're being woven into the JCL. And that's quite powerful. Another way I've seen that done occurring is you can also do Zoe TSO. So if I do Zoe TSO issue command time, all it's going to do is it's going to very simply going to issue the TSO time command. Yeah. Um, you can also do uh, dash dash, um, I think it's called SIM for suppress initialize it. Um, let me go back to here. Okay. Uh, Zoe TSO issue command suppress. I just need to get the syntax for this right. Sorry about this. Um, Good demo of how to use the uh, the web filter. <laughs> it is. A, I take that as a compliment. Uh, I, I, when I, I only came across this WH uh, um, uh, thing uh, a couple of weeks ago. What the, 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 the way, yeah, suppress startup messages, SSM. Sorry about that. So I'm just going to clear that down. I made a mistake there, SSM. So I'm going to do Zoe command. So this is very simple. The most simple TSO command you can do is to find out the time. Um, yeah, so the JCL substitution, the other thing that I see customers doing is, and I'm just going to have a quick look here, and I'm going to show you, I have, I went, I'm going to very quickly control V it here, just to show, I don't want it to break, so ETSO issue command exec, now you have to get this syntax a bit right, which is a bit annoying, is you have to, you double quote exec, and then you put your rex in there, winch j dot rex hello. Now, I'm very quickly going to switch to the Zoe Explorer that I'm kind of introducing a bit early into the play. He wasn't really meant to come on until Act Two, but never mind. Um, because I will switch to this, and I'll switch to Kix, which was the title of this talk. Um, but if I go and look at my Rex member, I've got a Rex member called Hello. Say, Hello World from Rex. Oh, let's do something. Hello World from the red pen crowd and I'm, I'm just making this up literally to show you that I'm, i haven't completely set the deck um so what i can do now is i can you you single quote and you double quote so what i'm doing now is i'm saying to zoe issue hello world from the red pen crowd and you can see i got that wrong what was my suppressed startup message i've forgotten it was the um SSM. Yeah, I would get that wrong one. But it's a press startup message, but we always have short text. So this is cool. So I see quite a lot of customers I've talked to about Zoe. And this is the thing that really kind of turns them on. Um, because they say, OK, I've got all these rec scripts. I've got these JCL. And by the way, I can pass parameters into this as well. And what I can now do is I can blend these two worlds together. And it means that you can create these facade scripts. And, and once you're in Rex, you're basically the world's your oyster, right? Because you've got you can you've got TSO, you can you can pretty much go anywhere you want on the system. So you re-architect the Rex scripts to make it accept input variables, re-architect the JCL, and then you drive them from outside. You know? Cool. And I'm going to switch to kick. Are there any questions on what I just showed you? Sorry, that wasn't there was one more script that I was going to quickly do just to show um, Zoe TSO issue command. So rack these uh, list ring, IZU key ring, IZU, you know, basically you can do, because you've got TSO, 
assuming you've got permission, and I do on this particular system have permission, I can basically do a rack, you know, rack F, start, I can start listing contents of a key ring. Did I hit enter on that one? Why is it not working? Oh, it's not working because very quickly, I don't want to shortchange you on this one. Um, I've got to log onto a firewall to get to that system. Um, Yeah, sorry about that. I, I was logged on and then I think I've only got a co cup of coffee or something that tied me out. Okay, so I'm just going to command C it, which is the interrupt. So if you're running a command that's hanging for some reason, I would have got a timeout. It, it, depending on your laptop, I've got a Mac and I just command C it to get back in. So let's first of all, let's go and run that on my default system. And it's going to say, it's just going to come back and go, really? Um, because I'm just, I'm not authorized to run it. Because um, I'm just not. Fortunately, I do have another system available. If anybody wants to, I can talk about how you direct to different systems. But the way you direct to a system is you have what's called a profile. The profile knows your system. It knows your endpoint you're going to. I'm now just going to a different system that I have slightly higher superpowers on. And that's what all of these are. I'm basically rerouting it to that system. And it's going to go and list my key ring for me. So you can do some quite interesting things because you can basically start issuing TSO commands and then you could grep, I mean, you know, you can grep this, you could orc it, you could, um, I'm not a USS Unix expert, you know, you can do string splicing, you know, you can put it in logic scripts. And if I go back to the PowerPoint demo very quickly, yeah, here we are, yeah. So you, you've got things like this where you've got some, um, command line interface and you're seeing Zoe files, list data sets, and you've got variables going in. Um, you know, your JCL can be inlined. You know, you can do clever things basically. And we have on the Zoe repository, which is open source. So you can download all of this stuff and please do. We have samples of Jenkins pipelines. We have samples of pipelines in other source, uh, other tools as well. Um, some customers use it for SonarCube, so you can drive SonarCube analysis. Um, we've got continuous integration. Profile automation is something we do. Within Zoe itself, there is a, there's a student learning competition. It used to be called Master the Mainframe. I think IBM and others may have just renamed it to be called Z Explorer or Z Explorer or something anyway. It has thousands of students join it every year, and they all log on to some cloud provider platform to authenticate themselves with their universities and stuff. And that then has to create credentials on a, on a mainframe that IBM hosts that gives them a little sandbox when they can do things. Um, they all end up using Zoe, which is great. But the most important thing for me is that that cloud platform, the way that it creates their credential, gives them the permission, unlock when they complete level one, it unlocks level two and so forth. That's all done with the Zoe command line interface. And those scripts, that are done uh, because there's no secrets needed uh, are here. That's what's called profile automation. And I know some customers as well that like to do that. If they have new joiners or they have some, some way to authenticate and, and give people, you know, they actually drive that stuff from pipelines. So that's all there for you. And again, you can see those scripts are just driving the command line interface. So you, just to remind you, you've got 25 minutes. What you're saying is you're saying get to kicks. Thanks, sir. No, yeah, everything's been useful. I'm sure that no one, no one's dropping off this session, so it must all be okay. useful. Thanks very much. Remind. Thank you. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna, now I'm gonna talk to kicks. So, so it's great that you can automate Z jobs, files, TSO. That's good. The, the, the next thing is people like to automate kicks and DB2 and MQ and so very quickly. What I'd like to do is drag in. But no, no, thanks for that time check, Stu. Sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't, I wasn't being ungrateful. Or apologies if it appeared that I was. Okay, so you can extend Zoe. The success of any platform is what you can plug into it. No matter whether you're selling games or coffee makers or whatever, right? People want to add brew coffee and play games. Um, so the command line interface is extensible, and I'm just scrolling down here. There are 27 extensions to the command line interface by software vendors. They're all here. Um, Phoenix, Broadcom. Broadcom, a huge 
a participant in Zoe. Um, so they, you know, ha have lots of these. Uh, IBM have some microfocus change managers here, which is very nice to see. And the one I'm really going to talk about is Kix, because we're talking about Kix. So the Kix plugin. Okay. Um, now the way you get the Kix plugin is you go to npmjs.com. If you want to, you can type the word Zoe and Kix. Um, and you can basically get that ID here. And you basically just, just install it. Now, once you've installed Kix, very quickly, what Stuart was talking about before, for those of you that joined at the start, was how do I connect to the Kix system? So I showed you a little bit of the Zoe Explorer. So when you download the Zoe Explorer by default, um, you can do things like edit files and look at jobs. And in fact, if I want, you can submit jobs and things. What we wanted to do was we wanted to create something that helped develop a persona to look at Kix. So there's two things that I'm going to show there. Um, so I'm just going to go Zoe Kix. Now, once I've got the Kix plugin installed, I can do various things with Kix. And I might actually very quickly, just for time, Stuart, I might go back to slides for these. Okay, I'll just go back to slides very quickly for these, then I'll get to demo later. So once you've installed the Kix plugin, when you do Zoe hyphen help, hyphen help W, you'll see all the Kix commands you've got. So you can list resources, you can uh, do actions on resources like discard, enable, disable, new copy, um, you know, adding to lists and things. We've tried to basically surface the things that developers need to be able to do. So if you're doing a pipeline and you're doing development and you've, perhaps you've submitted a job that compiles something, the next thing you might now want to do is you might want to new copy it, or you might want to do a phase in, or you might want to now enable the transaction, or you might want to purge a task. So we tried to focus on those sort of things, those commands. Now I'm just going to play a little video. So I can type Zoe Kicks, get resource Kicks program. And I can type in the region name. And you'll see I get a list of programs back. The next thing I wanted to show you is filtering and formatting. So when you get a list of programs back, and I'll very quickly do it here. Zoe kicks get resource kicks program. Uh, you get back lots of information, right? You get back every single attribute and every single program in the region. So the first thing I want to do is show how you can filter that. So you can do what is known as a response format filter. So you can filter the fields that you want. An example that I've got here is, if I go forward, you say RFF program length status new copy count. So what we're showing there is we're showing RFF just stands for, and I just do program status length. I'll just do two, two things. So rather than getting every single attribute back, okay, Oh, it should, should have been two dashes, my bad. We basically got less, got fewer columns. Um, so that's what we had there. You can also then start doing filtering criteria. And so you can do dash dash criteria. So if, again, if I come back here and I can say dash dash criteria, and we can see, okay, I've got status equals, okay, I've got one that said length equals, um, what was it, seven, four, five, six. So assuming that I haven't made a mistake, it's only gonna give me that one unless there were others. So basically you're able to narrow down. One of the other things, that we're able to do as well. Um, you can change the response format type. So that's RFT. So 
um, RFT string, I think RFT string, yeah, if you look now, now we're getting something that's more like a JSON object. So, so this is great. So if you're doing a client server and you're doing some automation and you want to say, well, have I got this program? What's its new copy count? Do I need to new copy it? Is it disabled? Do I need to enable it? You can get this information back because it's JSON. It's quite easy to then parse it. You can pipe it to jQuery library. You can start parsing that information and you can start constructing some quite nice logic and you just write it all in shell script or Python or whatever your client language is that you're familiar with on your PC and your laptop. And I see customers doing that with pipelines and that's quite nice. And you can even um, pick up resources and start to um, you know, copy them around and things like that. And uh, you know, so if you, perhaps you've got like four regions and they should already be clones of each other, but something is disabled in one region and it's enabled in the other three, you can write a script to just do that, see the difference and then perhaps enable it in the fourth one. So, so you have all of that power at your fingertips. Um, that's what these videos were showing. One other thing that's quite nice as well is, um, I'll just go back to here. Um, I think if I do RFT table, it comes back like a table. Yeah, and I can do RFH, which is response. It puts the headers on the table. So I'm just gonna get rid of that criteria. I'm just going to put something like um, so I've got all the programs that have got L in them. I've got the program, the status, and the length. Anyway, you can build up quite interesting things for Kicks. This is nice. Um, you can do more complex stuff. I've got an example here program equals LG, not status equals enabled. You can construct some Boolean conditions. You're not restricted to programs. I show programs. You can do Kicks local file. I've got a nice example here. We can see files, this one needs enabling. Um, and the list of resources that you, you, you can work with is not limited to just programs and local files. And there's a link here I've got. If you know the name of a program, some people know, know base tables by their sort of old school name, you need to know the new school name. So if perhaps I want to know what task is called, I can type task and, you know, kicks task sub pool, and that's what I would, that's what I would do, or kicks atom service. Okay, and there's lots of, and that's quite nice. Um, so, and it works if, if you've got BAS and you've got BAS tables enabled, it will work with BAS as well. Cool. Now I'm going to put it. Are there any questions on Kix on the Kix command line interface? Anybody's got any questions on that or not? No? Okay. Into the chat if you do. Yeah, please do, and please let us know if there's anything that we've that we've um, uh, that we've got wrong with the Kix command line interface. And remember, if anybody wants to ask questions, I'm quite happy to talk about MQ or DB2. I know for, for a lot of the pipe the pipelines that I see for DevOps automation, people will do perhaps they'll run a piece of Rex script or they'll do something automation, then they'll go and query a Kix region, and then they might need to do so, they might need to create a queue manager, or they might. Perhaps they're doing testing. I need to post a message on an MQ queue. You can do it again. You can do all of that with Zoe's MQ command line interface. Um, there might be a DB2 table. Perhaps they need to um, create a stored procedure or something. You can talk to the DB2. So you end up weaving all of these together. One thing I will show it now, but you can do it is that if think about your client, your client is running on your laptop, and that might be a Jenkins machine, and you're talking to ZOS, having a chatty conversation with it. Uh, we can work with multi-factor authentication. So multi-factor authentication, um, we can work with single sign-on, which is where you're not having to reflow your password constantly across the wire. You can do token-based authentication. So you log on once and it will validate that you are who you say you are and then give you a token with an expiry of eight hours or 24 hours, depending on how that's been set, which makes it less likely that that your that password will be lying around and it's less likely to be attacked anyway it's more secure so that's the advantage of having having all of these distance every plugins and that works it doesn't matter if you're using ca endeavor or ibm zos connect or whatever they they all work with that okay next very quick thing i'm going to talk about with kicks is one of the things remember i took sort of showed the fact that the the zero 
free explore and the command interface really go hand in glove. They're basically sharing the same logic. So if I do something here and I write mouse click and I say submit job, uh, come on, write mouse click. They submit job. It's really running the same underlying logic that when you saw me earlier doing Zoe jobs, submit DS, type in that name. It's the same fundamental underlying code. It's just a different form factor for the user interface. It takes me here. Um, what we found was that quite a lot of people were using their Zoe Explorer to do COBOL, traditional COBOL development, and then they would start submitting compiles. And after they submitted the compile, they wanted to do a new copy and they wanted to check things, but they didn't want to go back to the command line interface. So one of the things that we built recently, and if I go into the extensions for the marketplace and you go into VS Code, by the way, if you haven't got the Zoe Explorer, you just go into Zoe Explorer and get it. There's something called the Zoe Explorer for IBM Kicks. And that's really why I sort of submitted this talk was to talk about this. So let's get this covered in the last 15 minutes. I've got this installed. Uh, it's quite new. Um, we're only at 1.1. So it's only our first update since we first did it. What happens after you install this, you will see an extra graphic down here. And that extra graphic is called Kicks. Now, these systems here are, let me go back here, very profiles list kicks. So I've got four kick systems. I've got a Pixplex, that's my default system. I've got some other systems. These are the systems that hit, hit, uh, are here, there as well. So if you know how to create a CLI profile, um, if, if I've got a system that I haven't added here, I can add it in. Um, if I want to go by default, uh, that screen looks a bit, um, you can create a new connection to a new system here. And Stuart asked me a quick question earlier about knowing how to connect to that system. I'll show you a little very quickly. This system here, if um, I'll do IY star. Uh, you can do this in SDSF if you want to. I just effectively did the, the, the equivalent of an owner asterisk and a pre IY asterisk. So I could be doing this in SDSF, but I like to use the Explorer. So for, this is a standalone kicks region. And if you go to the standalone kicks region and look at, I think it's called WUTC, uh, which one else? Message user, sorry about that. Yeah, yeah. So that, that kicks region, uh, port 10887. If you have that message, then that means that support you're now connecting to. So if I go and look at this here, um, and let me right mouse click it and do update profile, this profile is connected to 10887, okay, for a standalone Kix region. That's what's called Kix Management Client Interface. Now, very quickly, what I'll show you, what we did with, with these is, um, here's my region for standalone region. We, we currently have three resources. We're gonna add some more, but basically I've got programs and if I go and list all programs, sorry, a little bit slow. One of the things we didn't want to do is list, I can see all of my programs. I'm just gonna go down to the bottom. Um, let me find them. I can type in a filter and of, for a particular program that I've got. So let's say I'm working on this program here. If the new copy count is higher than one, I can select the programs that I want to. Perhaps I've just compiled these programs, I need to new copy them. So I can just right mouse click them all and new copy them. And it basically iterates through and they've all gone up to new copy count of two. I can disable them. I can do a phase in. Phase in a new copy is whether your new copy is like now, 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 or it has to wait until it's not being used anymore. So it's whether it, it's loaded fresh or the last usage. Um, I can also see all the attributes for the program as well. So if I do something like, you know, define, I, I, you know, I can start filtering the attributes, um, which is quite, it's quite nice to do as well. Um, seems that the demo got to struck me down. This, uh, depending on whether I've connected or not, so that's how we deal with the kicks um, programs. We have transactions as well down here and local files, VSAM files. 
and I could do various actions like that VSAM file is closed. And this is where I might now need, I might wish to sort of enable that file and I might wish to open that file as well. And that failed probably because I haven't got permission. Yeah, so I haven't got permission to do that file. Um, but if I had permission to do that file, um, I would be able to, and it, because we, these are the kind of developer tasks that people want to do. We're going to add more to this. We're going to add web services. We're going to add TCP IP services, DB2 transactions and things we've got feedback for doing. Um, if I have a Kixplex, I'm connected to a Kixplex now. So Kixplex is basically an aggregation of regions and it's what well, I'd say probably about 50% of large, most large customers use Kixplexes. When I'm connected to that, I will see all of my regions. These regions are not active right now. They're managed regions that haven't been started, but we show them. And I have the same, uh, the, the same, same thing here. I can basically get into particular regions and see the list of programs within regions and start to do new copy. Does anybody have any questions about that? I rattled through that. Okay, so if you are a VS Code user and you already use the Zoe Explorer, what we really want to do is find out what are the things that, what are the things where you've used the Zoe Explorer, but you've now had to drop into Cedar or drop into CMT, you know, or drop into TSO or do something. What we really want to do is get all of those use cases into VS Code so you can stay in VS Code. Um, that's really what the purpose of us building this um, building this interface to make it that programmer. And the first one we focused on was new copy. So we can do new copies. The next ones we're gonna be focusing on are for web transactions, being able to do things like pipeline scans and things like that, okay? And also we've been asked for people, uh, some customers we share this to, they, they don't use vSAM, they use DB2 and some use MQ. So we're trying to work out what those programmers, we don't want this to be, so I used to work on this. I'll, I'll show you what this is. This is the Kix Explorer. This is a system programmer tool that lets you do anything you want to with any base table. This is not what we're building here. We want to do something that's very developer focused. So we've deliberately hidden certain things and you know, just try to focus on the actions that, that make sense for a developer to do. Okay, so uh, if I go to Zoe Explorer for IBM Kix, if you want to, you can chat. There's a Slack channel where you can talk to us. And if you hit that link, I think it's going to take me straight to the Slack channel. Which if I'm, here it is. So there's a Slack channel. In fact, you can see my friend Jeffin, uh, colleague Jeffin has just um, posted just last week that he updated it. So anybody, if you want to get involved, chat um, and anybody if you want to we've got 15 open issues you can go straight here like I said it's an open source project you can even provide the fixes for these issues if you want create new ones you know create new issues uh, you can see what we're working on here um, you know improving our document uh, allow us to show tasks let you kill kill tasks we had customers who say we have runaway tasks so that's really what we're trying to do is get that developer experience um, working right now Okay. No questions. Okay. So I'll just drop back into this, my presentation. And we've got uh, just five more minutes, Joe. Mm -hmm. Okay, no worries. So. Uh, so Joe and I are the co-chairs of the AppDev um, stream with GSC. So if there's more you want to know or any topics that you'd, uh, you'd ever wanted to hear about from, um, uh, either Zoe or other things, then um, feel free to also reach out to us and uh, we'll see if we can put them on the agenda for this year or um, uh, mid-year. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, thanks to it. What, one other quick thing with, with Zoe and DevOps is within Zoe, we do lots of builds. We do hundreds of builds a day um, for some of our components. Where Zoe itself is open source, but what I like about Zoe's open source is all of our pipeline is open source and all of our pipeline eats our own cooking. Zoe's pipeline is built using Zoe, right? So we have some stuff that we, we build off platform, um, you know, our node packages and things like that. Some stuff we build on ZOS. We have a ZOS system at Marist College in Poughkeepsie. 
So if anybody wants to understand, and we and we and we do kicks and D2 and MQ as well, we do and IMS as well. If anybody wants to understand how to do that, how we, we do those pipelines, that itself open source. I wouldn't say we're the best DevOps pipeline in the world because we don't use vendor tools. There are great vendor tools that are very, and I'm not, I'm not going to try and sell you one, right? But every vendor has very, very good tools. And I know customers who enjoy using them. But if you want to see, at least get in the essence of how to do sort of shift left testing, and we, we, use, we use open source tools because we have to, because we're part of the Linux Foundation and we don't prejudice a particular vendor. All of our pipelines are out there for anybody to see. Um, yeah, uh, one other quick thing I just wanted to highlight before I get to the end is sometimes I get asked by people, so um, like mentees or people on LinkedIn reach out and they say, you know, I, I love the mainframe, but I can't log on to a mainframe. So how can I learn how to become a mainframer? You know, they, they can see the high salaries. They realize the skills shortage is coming. We've got this kind of chasm of people retiring and not enough people to replace them. And you get in this catch 22, which is the only way you can ever have mainframe skills is to have worked for a mainframe company who may not hire you unless you have one. There's great educational initiatives going on all around the world to address that. But if you need access to a mainframe, this red book here, the link, redbooksibm.com, red papers, um, there's a picture here. That's actually the bottom of Sophie. Sophie, got, Sophie Rogers, she got married actually uh, recently. She changed her name. But if you download this red book, the red book teaches you how to do kicks. The red book's called Modernizing Applications with Kicks. When you load in the course, you will have access to a mainframe. So IBM has a very large mainframe in the Dallas System Center that everybody who does master the mainframe or the COBOL course gets a user ID too. Um, you can keep that user ID, I think, for up to a year or something. You can ask for it to be renewed. You get access to a mainframe. It's, and you start, as you do each course chapter and complete one, uh, you submit it and then more will get unlocked for you. So you have slightly more space, slightly more room available, and you can, you can progress uh, through your mainframe career with that. So please recommend that. There's no cost at all. Um, there's another way you can get access to mainframe. There's something called Z Software Trials. Um, this is not a real mainframe. It's running in a public cloud. It's an emulated mainframe. It's still the same instruction set. Some things work faster, some work a little bit slower, but if you need to, you can go there and get access to that. And this developer tutorial as well, if you follow that one, uh, you will get access, register access to get a mainframe, verify access. You can join the Slack channel again. This is part of the open mainframe. But, and as I said before, all of the system that when you click it validates you is written in Zoe. It's written in Zoe command line interface and all of that's open source. So understand how you might want to do that you can you know start reading that code and smoking that code cool so just to be conscious of time uh Stuart do you want to wrap up there's a feedback slide here um thanks so it's fast paced lots of energy brilliant um 2ak was the uh session for feedback and um I found it pretty informative so thank you Joe really appreciate that and uh to everyone else have a good rest of the GSE and uh, we'll speak to you soon. Bye for now. Cheers, everyone. Stay safe. Yeah. Thanks, Stuart.